What is up guys, Python here, back with another video, and today we're going to be doing something that I kind of had a video idea about for quite some time now, I just never came around to doing it actually. Today we're going to be talking about NHL teams and their futures, so this is obviously in different tiers, I'm using the tiers just to help with this, just to keep everything a little more organized. So we've got obviously the top tier for the teams with the brightest futures, we got slightly bright futures for the teams that could have a bright future, but uh, maybe they're not at the complete top of the pack as, uh, well, you'll see teams like that once we get there. Could go either way, obviously, for the teams that are either looking like they have some of a bright future or that look like they could be starting to fall off a bit or like you guys i think get the idea of the could go either way tier it's either they could end up having some success and there's one team in particular that i have an idea of that i'm putting in this tier that's kind of uh what made me think of this here specifically we have the slightly bad future which is for the teams that have a future that is obviously not terrible but uh Things are starting to fall off. There's a couple teams that could go really fit the bill for that category. We have really bad futures. Obviously, the teams that are just incomplete hell. And then we, of course, have, and we're just going to throw them, honestly, in the tier now, the Buffalo Sabres. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Sabre fans, but you know it. I know it. The Buffalo Sabres have legit nothing uh, to look forward to right now. Jack Eichel's about to be out soon. You have Sam Reinhardt, who's going to be out soon. Risto Linen, he's not necessarily good, but he's on his way out. And other than that, all you really have is Darlene. You have um, Lukanen, and then Jack Quinn in the pipeline. And I guess you have Paterka in the pipeline, too. But other than that, there's not really much to look forward to when it comes to the Buffalo Sabres. And the depending on the return of the Eichel trade, which could be to my New York Rangers, uh, and uh, the Reinhardt trade, it really depends on those returns of if their future could be bright or not. But if they could get the right return on those guys, then this could easily be a different conversation. And I wouldn't put them in bright futures just because you never know with their owners what could happen and what could go wrong. But I'd put them in probably the slightly bright future at that point but as of right now there is not really much to look forward to in buffalo but now that we got them out of the way let's get to the real part of the tier list so next we have the anaheim ducks and this is a team right here this isn't the team i was talking about in the could go either way tier but they definitely fit that bill as well their team that they do have some older guys on the team like get they do ever kill who they are probably going to move they have gibson there of course but they're Probably all going to be gone relatively soon. I'm not sure about Gibson, though. But this is a team that could go either way. They do have some exciting young players, starting with, of course, Trevor Zegers and Jamie Drysdale. But they don't have really anyone else that's that exciting outside of that. I mean, Sam Steele isn't that much younger anymore. They don't really have those top-of-the-line guys outside of those two. But other than that, uh, the Ducks have the number three overall pick this year that's definitely going to help them not really a strong draft class but if you could grab like a luke hughes or something there to help bolster your blue line that's going to really go a long way uh with your future there and i wouldn't put them in bright futures yet but the ducks are uh definitely a team that could go either way or they could just completely prove me wrong who the hell knows next the arizona coyotes sorry az sports guy but i gotta put them in Honestly, I got to put them in the really bad future. This is a team that might not even be playing where they are at right now in their current location. And AZ Sports Guy, I should have gave you like a warning to take your headphones off for that part because I know you're tired of hearing it. And I know all Arizona fans are tired of hearing it, but they know it's true. And Arizona just does not have much to look forward to. The prospect pool for them is relatively weak. You have Ekman Larson, who's on his way out the door. Phil Kessel is not getting any younger. Uh, you have Kemper and Ronta in that, which you have two exciting goalies there, I guess. One you might lose to Seattle, but you do have two exciting goalies there, so I guess that is a good thing about Arizona. Other than that, though, they really do not have much. Yeah, they have Keller, uh, but other than that, I mean, it's just it's just not good in Arizona, and I don't see things getting better. And then, of course, it does not help when they lost their first-round pick this year to the cheating scandal where they 
the legally scouted prospect. So I got to put him in the really bad future for that. Next, we have the Boston Bruins. And this team, I want, I would have put him in the could go either way tier, but I have to put him in the slightly bad future tier, honestly, because things are not looking too great for them. Another uh, early exit. I went, not necessarily early exit, but a second round exit. Um, which is just not good enough for the Boston Bruins, a team that has really failed to win a cup with their core that they have right now. Bergeron, Marchand, all of them are getting older. Tuka Rask played injured. He was still really good in the playoffs, but he did play injured, which could have costed them the series, honestly, against the Islanders. But they are honestly a team that, other than uh, Pasta, they might have to, man, I mean... What's going to keep Pasta around, though, if they have to go into a rebuild? It's very possible that they're going to have to go into a rebuild soon. I'm playing them in slightly bad because they could um, fix some things up and easily go on a cup run next year, potentially, maybe. But uh, I'm playing them in the slightly bad just because, based on what I saw this year, the defense looks awful. That's another reason they lost here. Just careless turnovers, Mac other than McAvoy, of course. McAvoy, who I believe was snubbed in the... Norris conversation this year and should have been there instead of Victor Hedman. Gotta put them in the slightly bad future tier, honestly. I mean, I just don't know how things get that much better for the Bruins without fixing that entire defensive core entirely. And if they don't win a cup with Bergeron or Marsh soon, it's gonna be hard to keep Pasta there. And it's gonna be bad and they're gonna have to rebuild. So things slightly bad there. And another slightly bad team, so we're not going to really be spreading them out anymore. We finally have two teams in the same tier. The Calgary Flames go in the slightly bad tier because the Calgary Flames are just... Every year, it's the conversation that this is going to be the year they blow it up. This is going to be the year they blow it up. This is going to be the year they blow it up. And we have just haven't seen it yet. And every year, they just run it back with the same core, and it just never works out. They tried signing a bunch of Canuck players this past offseason with Mark Strom and Tanev and others. Didn't work out at all. Uh, the, trading Johnny Gaudreau has been a rumor for the past two, three years at this point. It's never happened. Kachuk's rumored to want to trade out. We don't know how true that is still. But uh, things could get really bad in Calgary if that is true because using a uh, losing a young guy like that is just not something you want to see. Next up, we have Carolina. This is easily a team that goes in the bright future tier. Uh, they have a lot of, I don't want to necessarily call them that young because like Ajo, Svechikov, guys like that aren't that young, but they're going to enter their prime soon. And they're going to, boy, are the Canes going to be scary when they do. They finally found their answer and goal in the Deljevic. They definitely need a new backup. Mirazik was really bad, but they lost in five games to the Lightning. And in my opinion, this series was somewhat winnable for them. I don't understand why Peter Mirazik ended up being in goal for, I believe it was game four. It was game three or game four that he ended up being in goal for. I don't understand the decision to this day. And that could have easily changed the series. Potentially, you maybe force a game seven at the very least because of momentum swings and everything. But that's besides the point. We're talking about their future. They definitely have a bright future you got obviously Marty Nietzsche you got uh Seth Seth Jarvis was he, did the Canes draft him I I don't remember but um they got Gungler in the draft I know with the Adam Fox pick that we ended up trading so they they have a lot of good young prospects Joey Keane also in there I only know most of the Ranger guys that we ended up shipping to them to be completely honest with you but um they do have a pretty bright future there in Carolina and it's hard to argue that I, I mean they're just a exciting team next up Chicago this is a very oh and with carolina by the way things might not be too bright with dougie hamilton but they're still really good on the blue line but chicago now this is a very tricky team because they do have the young guys they do have kubalik they have doc obviously there but duncan keith is a rumor to be on his way out jonathan taze and kane are not um not getting any younger they're still good players but Obviously, they weren't. They're not what they once were. Like Kane did have a pretty good year this year. I gotta put them in the could go either way because 
they're rumored to get maybe Seth Jones or Dougie Hamilton and clearing cap space for that. And that's why they're trading Keith in the first place. So maybe they're looking to contend, but then they also seemed like they were hinting at a rebuild last year. I don't know what the hell is going on in Chicago at all. Uh, but Lakenen is not really, in my opinion, the solution in net going forward for the Blackhawks. But I, I couldn't tell you what's going on in Chicago. I really couldn't tell you. Uh, I got to put him in the could go either way because I do have some uh, young guys, but I feel like you got to try to contend with when you have Kane and Taste, though, right? Like, you can't just waste the last few years you have with those with those guys. Next to Colorado Avalanche, I mean, this is easy also. brightest um, Bright futures for them easily easily one of the brightest futures in hockey they of course have the team that they have now they still have alex newhook who got a little bit of a look uh at the nhl this year they have him who is going to develop makari is super young and is could have won the norris this year if he didn't get hurt so you have him obviously there that could and he's only going to get better with age, which is just insane with how good he is. You have Devontae's back there, which they completely fleece the Islanders on that trade. And it wasn't even close, although those draft picks could help the Islanders with uh, cap space issues this offseason. But when it comes to what the Avalanche have, you obviously have Grubauer and Goal up front. Nathan McKinnon, Landis Gog, who knows what's going to happen with him. You have ranting in up there as well and just the forward group is stacked just the depth you have Kadri down there also the depth is unreal in colorado and they still have a strong prospect pool colorado definitely has one of the brightest futures they just got to make a few tweaks on the blue line to really solidify themselves and ju just to get over the hump a bit Next, the Blue Jackets. I'm going to put them in the slightly bad just because they're just starting their rebuild. They brought back John Davidson, which, of course, as a Ranger fan, I could say he is definitely good. If you are looking to rebuild, he is definitely that. Uh, a guy that you want in your front office. And I'm putting them in slightly bad. I can't put them in bad, obviously, because they're just starting their rebuild. But they have three first-round picks, I believe, because of Nick Foligno. Uh, I forgot the other trade. I think Savard. They ended up getting a first round pick from which is just ridiculous still but kind of working out for tampa there right now huh uh at the time of recording this they're up 3-0 in the cup i don't know if i'm up on this uh before or after game four but uh yeah columbus they have some young exciting guys so uh really could go either way and they're really gonna bolster up that uh that farm system chinnikov who looked at, like people were like who the hell is this guy last year the draft has looked like a pretty promising pick so far so yep slightly bad future for them because we just don't know yet how the how the farm system is gonna look <sighs> dallas um i'm gonna put them in the slightly bad future because you do have guys that just aren't getting any younger like ben and sagan of course leading the pack there uh Bishop, you don't know if he could stay healthy, which it just seems like he can't at all. And then Ottinger's really going to have to take the net over because I don't think Hudobin's going to stay past this offseason because I think they're going to rock with Bishop and Ottinger. You really have to keep Ottinger there, but I don't know how he could carry the load. God forbid he has to, but it, it's tough. They don't really have too many young guys. They do have Jason Robertson there in the forward group. Uh, I guess Miro Heiskin. They do have a couple of good young guys, but it's just they're they're a weird team. I could put I'm gonna put them in the could go either way actually because they could be a contending team, uh, but it's just it's just tough to say with them. Next we got the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, I'm gonna put them in the bright future. I was tempted to put them in the slightly bright. Um, Future. I need to remove the S there. I was tempted to put them in the slightly bright future tier because of the fact that, yeah, they have a strong uh, farm system, but I feel like it could get a little bit better. But I'm going to put them in the bright future. Marit Sider has looked like an insane pick for Steve Eisman, which people were completely shocked about that on the day of the draft, which as shocked as I was also, there was this thing where it's like, it's Steve Eisman. Of course, he... He's got he's got something up his sleeve. He knows what he's doing. So 
Uh, I would trust the guy if I was a Red Wings fan. And even if it doesn't seem like the right pick, I would trust it. Lucas Raymond, I didn't think he should have went fourth overall. I was honestly someone that thought Marco Rossi should have went um, fourth overall, which he ended up falling to the wild. Great pick there for them. But uh, for Detroit, yeah, really bright future for them. They have a lot of promising young pieces there, so can't argue it. Edmonton Oilers could go either way. I mean, that they have two of the best players in hockey with McDavid and Dreisaitl, of course. In goal, Smith was insane. Their defense is just terrible. Tyson Barry was their best defenseman, and he can't even defend if his life depended on it. He's just there really for points. I guess you could argue Nurse is better. Uh, but other than that, I mean, they need to get better wingers. They really do. Nugent Hopkins just signed that extension. I don't know how much that's going to really affect if they could go out and get some help on the wing for McDavid and Dreisaitl, but we'll wait and see on that. Uh, but they could go either way because they could easily fix things and get better, or worse comes to worse. I mean... The worst would really be they do have to blow it up because I remember the whole thing that, oh, McDavid's two-year window plan or whatever when Ken Holland's up then or whatever that was. Next year, the Florida Panthers, bright future. Easily, easily a bright future for them. They got Spencer Knight, who's going to be uh, in goal for them. They really shouldn't have signed Bobrovsky to that deal. I still don't understand that after gang spencer and i believe they did it after which i i don't get you have anton lindell who was i was a huge fan of going into the draft and that's who i wanted the rangers to get if they of course didn't win the draft lottery last year so uh they do have those two guys that really stand out when it comes to the pipeline sorry that i don't really know too much of the prospect pools for some of these teams i do know for this next team coming up and also you can move on to the next team because uh yeah the panthers just not much else to say but bright future for them they looked really great this year the only thing is they gotta try to keep barkov there long term if they really want to solidify that bright future and speaking of bright futures la king's bright future you got uh byfield and turcott that are going to be leading it down the middle uh cal peterson will be the goalie of the future potentially i don't know if he had that good of a year or not i didn't really watch a lot of uh west teams this year i Honestly, didn't really watch any teams that were outside of the outside of the division until the playoffs. I watched a little bit of the Central, but that's really about it. But uh, those are two guys that stand out for them, of course, and they do have a pretty good draft pick, of course, again this year. So they're gonna get to bolster that even more, and they just have a really bright future there in LA. So as a Ranger fan. <sighs> scared i'm scared about that because of 2014 specifically and how that could be a rematch one day but next missile wild i'm playing them in slightly bright future because of one reason and one reason only kaprizov what the hell is going to happen with him is he going to stay in minnesota or is he going to go back to the khl but if he does stay easily a bright future they looked great this year you got marco rossi who i mentioned before in the pipeline who's going to help that forward group and that's honestly in my opinion one of the main problems of minnesota is their forward group so adding a guy like rossi will help so i'm gonna put him in the slightly bright future montreal i mean come on bright future easily they made it to the stanley cup this year with a really young team caulfield is going to be a star in this league still at a steal of a pick at 15 and i was saying it with my friend that uh we couldn't believe that he fell to 15 that just because of his size like it was just, it's just stupid and gms really need to uh wake the hell up and realize that they shouldn't be uh passing up on players just because of their size it should really be a matter of just pure talent i don't think that caulfield would have been really a top five pick but definitely should have been top 10 but uh, besides that, yeah, they have a bright future. I mean, you have Toffoli and Suzuki on that first line. With Caulfield, they have some young guys on the blue line coming up. The only question, of course, is how much longer is Carey Price going to be doing this for? He didn't have the best regular season, but he's just been outstanding in the playoffs so far. So even though they're down 3-0 in the Stanley Cup, 
if you're a Montreal fan, you can't complain about this here. You guys were not even supposed to be in this position. You had two teams in the regular season that missed the playoffs. Of course, one being my Rangers that had more points than you, and you're in the Stanley Cup Finals. You cannot complain with this. Uh, Nashville, slightly bad future because they still could contend. They did they did just trade Victor Arvidsson, so that, that kind of uh, doesn't really help my case here, but... Uh, if they really do make some big changes like trading Forsberg, Yossi, any guys like that, that would definitely uh, signify them rebuilding, which I think they should. I think it's long overdue a rebuild in Nashville. I don't know what it's going to take for them to wake up and realize that, but Rene is probably done there. Soros looks like a good goalie. Their defense is a terrible on paper with Ellis and Yossi leading the way. And then their forward group doesn't look that bad on paper either, but I... I don't see how you fix this team. I really don't. Next, the New Jersey Devils. Slightly bright future for them as of now. I can't put them in that bright future category just yet because they haven't shown um, enough to me. I guess that kind of means I should bump Detroit down um, and really LA. Honestly, if we're, I'm going to go based on that. But no, no, I'll put all of them in the bright future tier, honestly. Because um, New Jersey, of course, has Heischer and Hughes down the middle. They're going to have Holtz also. They have him in the pipeline. They got that defenseman with a last name that I I still don't know how to pronounce it to say last year in the draft. And I forgot who else they ended up drafting. Um, but I remember their 2020 draft. They had three first-round picks. They hit on all of them. So... Bright future for them in New Jersey, and as a Ranger fan, I am pretty scared about that. Next, we got the New York Islanders. This is the team that I was talking about that is a perfect example of could go either way because they obviously went to the conference finals back-to-back -back season, so it could go either way. Like They could be contenders, or things could be bad because they don't have a lot of cap space this offseason. They don't have too much really in the pipeline when it comes to young players outside of Robin Salo. That's really about it for the Islanders in the pipeline in terms of really prospects that are going to make some sort of an impact. Um, but yeah, outside of that, they don't really have any main guys. Wallstrom's going to develop for them. He's going to be a good player for them. Barzell's only going to get better with age as well. But they do have some bad contracts on that team that puts it in the could go either way tier for me. And if they don't win a cup within the Barry Trotz window, which time's time's ticking already. I'm pretty sure he has two years left on the contract, so the Islanders are gonna have to act quick um, if they want a Stanley Cup. Uh, my New York Rangers. I'm ready for the bias comments, but bright future and i don't care if anyone calls me bias it's true you know it i know it you have obviously igor shesterkin leading the way in net adam fox who just won the norris i can't believe i got to say that and i'm happy i do with his defensive partner ryan lingren who's really young and is showing that he's one of the most underrated defensemen in the league you have keandre miller there of course on the blue line truba not the best contract, but you have them there. You got Niels Lundqvist coming up, Braden Schneider, Matt Robertson. You have a bunch of young guys on the blue line, and then the forward group, obviously Lafreniere, Kako leading the way there. You have Panarin up front there, Zibanejad, Kreider. You have Hedl coming up in the pipeline. You have Paj and Yemi. You have Morgan Barron, who got a cup of coffee. Kravtsov, who got a cup of coffee in the NHL this year. You just, the prospect pool is ridiculous. I could go on all video. I, I could go on for hours with the, why the Rangers future is bright. And that's, of course, me being a homer and knowing all the prospects and everything for the Rangers. But I could go on for a while. The Rangers have one of the brightest futures. And so do the Ottawa Senators. They were, it, it's weird how under the radar they were in this uh second half of the season they were one of the best teams in hockey and people do not recognize it enough and they have a lot of good young forwards a lot of good young forwards um and just a lot of good young players in general you got shabbat on the blue line of course you got sanderson coming through stutzel who they drafted third overall last year 
they have so many good young players and they were really good in the second half ottawa could sneak into the playoffs next year so yeah bright future tier for them philadelphia could go either way because this team makes zero sense one year they're in the playoffs one year they're not one year in the they're in the playoffs one year they're not so i don't know you have carter hart in that their forward group is good their defense has a couple of holes on it but they're fixable holes so i i don't know what's going to happen with philly they need to address the defense so that's for damn sure the penguins i'm going to put them in the slightly bad future crosby and malkin are not getting any younger and they really need to act fast to retool somewhat and build um get some pieces around there the defense is just it's awful tristan jari is a disgrace he single-handedly threw that series against the islanders and by through i mean he put the series on a plate and said here you go especially in the game where he turned the puck over and gave it right to him that was just my god my god jari and uh, as a Ranger fan, though, I'm here for Pittsburgh sucking, but uh, yeah, they need to make some changes. The Sharks, sorry, Nick, but they are in the really bad future tier, and I don't know what else to say. Their contract situations are awful with so many players. Doug Wilson, I don't know what he is on when he is uh, so, uh, giving these players these contracts, but I love whatever he's smoking because he is smoking some really good stuff because he gives players the longest term deals for the stupidest reasons. Just no reason at all. Oh, you want an eight year contract? Here you go. And signs them to however much money they want. Burns locked up for way too long of term. Carlson has not worked out really. He worked out when they trade for him. And then, of course, he got the extension and it's not been the same. Uh, Vlasic's under large contract. Kane, who knows what's going to happen with him with the off the ice uh stuff there they have way too many bad contracts and they don't really have a lot of promising young guys martin jones is not a good goalie san jose i don't know i don't know with them the st louis blues i'm gonna put them in i'm gonna put them in the they're gonna go in the really bad future honestly for me because they don't really have no that's a little harsh i'll put him in slightly bad bennington is in my opinion an overrated goalie he has not been he's not as good as uh people make him out to be or i don't hear people talking about him as much at least but uh he ended up being super overhyped yes he got cups so blues fans you don't care that your future's bad because you got the cup at least but tarasenko the guy can't stay on the ice he's probably getting traded and the blues really need to retool they just got sw they got spanked by the avalanche obviously a sweep there so putting them in the slightly bad because i don't know what's going to happen with them by the way i'm not ranking the kraken of course because they don't even have a damn roster uh the lightning what what do i say what do i need to say they're about to win back-to-back -back cups yeah and they still just have young guys like you know brayden point sergachev no big deal but yeah bright future for them uh the toronto maple Leafs, slightly bright future for them as of now things could shake up i i don't i don't know what went wrong for them i don't understand still what went wrong for them and how they ended up being eliminated but they have a deep roster i just don't understand what the problem is except for underachievement from specifically mitch marner is the guy you could really point the finger at when it comes to underachieving in the playoffs but i mean all of them did matthews did too but at least he freaking scored a goal and didn't take a two minute over the glass penalty but they still they have a couple of young guys they have nick robertson they have amirov down there in the pipeline lilia grin needs to really solidify a spot on the blue line they have sandine back there on the blue line they have some good pieces and i'm gonna put them in the slightly bright future because they still in my opinion are a cup contender they just need to find a way to get over the damn hump the canucks i'm gonna put them in the slightly bright future because they do have a lot of good young guys but I mean, Holpe 
was awful for them. That's a terrible signing. Thank God it's only two years. That was smart, at least. But other than that, I mean, they have a lot of good young guys. They just, I don't know what went wrong. Doesn't help the situation that they had this year with COVID, but slightly bright future for them. Golden Knights, same thing. Slightly bright future for them. They are going to probably over panic, in my opinion, and do everything to win a cup because they are really desperate to win one. They are apparently in the talks for Jack Eichel, which is ridiculous to me. But slightly bright future for them. They still do have a great uh, forward group, great defense, and a decision is probably going to come in goal. They really have to make a decision. You can't spend that much money just on two goaltenders with Leonard and Fleury. And I'd imagine, I think Leonard's going to end up being the guy that um, gets the job. And it's stupid, but that's going to be the case. Washington, slightly bad future. It is getting scary that they are constantly now a first round, second round exit team, and they have not looked the same since Trotz has left. And it's, it's bad. It's bad. And Ovi's not getting any younger. He's probably going to stay, though. But Washington is definitely on the decline, and they got their cup, so they're happy. But this is a team that by next year we could be putting in the really bad future tier. They really need to start a rebuild soon, or they really need to retool and get try to get OV one more cup. And then next we got, or lastly, we got Winnipeg. I'm going to put them in the... I'm going to put them in... They're a tough team to rank or a tough team to place. I'm going to put them, though, in the could go either way because they do have um, promising young guys like uh, Heinola leading the, or Heinola leading the, I, I don't know how you pronounce his name. I, it's one in the morning right now. I'm dead tired while making this video. I got more and more tired as this video is going, to be completely honest with you guys. But um, yeah, he's going to be great for them on the blue line and that's really where they are weak is on the blue line their forward group is really good they could use a little bit more depth there on the bottom six but their defense definitely is their main concern with the team but could go either way with them but that's going to be the video i am dead tired so i'm probably going to hit the sleep now i hope you guys did enjoy the video if you did leave a like subscribe if you guys are new and that's been python i'm out peace